Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's 9 o'clock. I'm on a call to order. This is a regular meeting of the Commissioner's Court of Hood County, Texas. Today is Friday, July the 9th. It's 9 a.m. We're in the Century Dreary Room of the Hood County Justice Center at 1200 West Pearl Street, Granbury, Texas. We are very honored today to have with us uh, Dr. John Knox. I mean, he's been around here a long time. I've known him for 30 years, I guess. He's a, not only is he a, the pastor of the Granbury Church of Christ, who feeds all the first responders like the Tuesdays all the time and in charge of that, and he's got some real good help there at that Church of Christ, too. And you know who I'm talking about, Lita Mae Andrews, you know. But he's brought here today by our good friend, Dr. Bill Miller, who is the, a member of the Hood County Pastor Council who works, shall I say, with me in contacting every Christian minister in Hood County to come up here and say an invocation. Do we? Isn't that right? We've been doing this for a while. Anyway, Dr. Knox, please give us the invocation. So let's pause and pray. Our Father, we're thankful for the day. And we pause just for a moment to give thanks who, for those who have committed to serve our county, for our commissioners, for our department heads, for everybody out there serving in their respective roles. And today, I pray specifically that each of them will hear an encouraging word, something that's uplifting, something that's helpful, something that's comforting. Father, we acknowledge how much negative feedback they get, so I pray for each person here today that each person will hear an encouraging word unique to them. Father, I pray for our deputies that are out there working even as we speak and our city officers along with them with our troopers. Pray for their safety and pray for the well-being of their families. It's an intense time right now, Father, and so their safety is so, so much before us, and we pray that you'll guide their every decision. Thankful for the day. Pray for wisdom and discernment as this meeting unfolds. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, since this is the first regular commission of court meeting of the month, we have the comments from the citizens at large so that if any citizen wishes to talk about any subject not on the agenda, Sheriff Deeds has a public participation form if you will fill that out and hand it to the sheriff. Uh, there's a maximum of five minutes to talk on any topic with a maximum of 30 minutes on comments at large. Secondly, for uh, the citizens to talk on any agenda item, again, you must fill out a public participation form, hand it to Sheriff Deeds, he hands it to uh, Ms. Lang, our county clerk, and then they fill it out and hand it up here to us, and it must be filled out prior to the agenda item that's called. And please note whether you are for or against an item because again, there's a maximum of 30 minutes on any agenda item, and if there's more than six speakers, the time is equally divided between the people for and the people against a certain agenda item. So I got some very good news today and something that we all should be very proud of. And that's that we have a special presentation. We have a Citizens Hero Award. And this is very, very special. Is there somebody from the Texas Heroes Foundation here that wants to please come on up here and tell us what this brave young man, and he's a, 
good looking guy too, isn't he? Isn't he? <laughs> we, we noticed that right off. You did notice, you noticed that right off? Yes, I figured all y'all did, especially all the girls that he brought with him. But anyway, would you so. tell us what Brandon did, please? Okay, I'm Peggy Freeman. I'm a member of the Texas Heroes Foundation. And we uh, have been in, uh, celebrating Texas history in Hood County for about seven or eight years now. Uh, we are presently having our celebrations in Acton, uh, close to Elizabeth Crockett's gravesite, so that the students can see Elizabeth Crockett's grave and know the history that Hood County has in the state of Texas. This year, we were honored to have um, several young people, some, several actors, uh, professional from the Fort Worth area, and Brendan Hartman was one of those. Brendan gave that young look of William Barrett Travis, and especially with his flat hat and his sword. I told him he couldn't bring his sword this morning, so, uh, but it came in handy on that day. Uh, would you like for me to? Yes, okay. please. On that day, after he had presented several times as William Travis, he was taking a break and was down by the food truck um, on the back side of it, visiting with some of our other portrayers. And um, the food truck had a uh, generator. Generator, thank you, old brain. Uh, a generator with a, with a towel over it, and the towel caught on fire. And no one was there to see it except for the three or four of them. Well, Brendan says, I don't know what I was thinking, but I whipped out my sword. <laughs> but then it came in handy because he took the sword, he flipped the towel off that was on fire. Underneath the towel and the generator were two big gas tanks that were swelling from the heat already. And so not only did he take the towel off and get that, but he pulled the gas tanks out, uh, which was, I told him, was so brave, but don't ever do that again. Yes. <laughs> As his mom, I could just imagine. Uh, our firemen had, had been there most of the day, and they had just left um, in between sets, and of course they were there in just minutes. Uh, and put everything else out and got it. Inside that food truck was a precious uh, older couple and their grandson, a uh, young man, who were serving us. They had no idea the danger they were in. And of course, all the way around that food truck were hundreds of people that had come for the event. So we're very grateful uh, for that heroism and just wanted to honor Brandon, Brendan uh, Hartman. Good. Thank you very much for that.
Good job. Really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Oh, by the way, I think we should all recognize his father and mother and sister and good friends that are here today because they raised their son very right. Would y'all stand up, please, and we'll all acknowledge y'all. And thank the Texas Heroes Foundation for bringing that up to our attention and doing this. And we're, we're going to uh, reward you, not punish you. So y'all are free to leave unless you want to sit here and listen to the rest of the meeting, but you're free to leave. But thank you very much. You raised a good son. Thank you. Okay. Next, there are no citizenship, uh, no service awards. Is that right? Okay. So that brings us down to the citizens comments at large and uh, we have it says two up at the top here Miss Lang but yeah. I'll oh I'm sorry I got it okay okay the okay the first is Mr. Steve Biggers morning court thanks for letting me be here um, a year and a half ago I made my debut at this pulpit and I've not been I mean I have been a repeat offender many times you guys have heard from me but I'm going to circle back to my original subject a year and a half ago and that was the um, county mandated extortion of homeowners here that have aerobic systems when I moved to this town six years ago, bought a home, I had a couple priorities that were important to me. One, no city limits, no HOA. I'm not a permit kind of guy. If I want to change the color of my mailbox, I don't need to ask somebody to do that. So we bought our home and I had no idea what an aerobic septic system was. So someone told me to go down to the environmental health department. They'll read me in on everything. They'll enlighten me on everything. I had a couple broken heads and I wanted to get enlightened. And they did uh, to the tune of $450 later when I wanted to change the heads, put the new ones in the ground, move them out a little bit, get inspections, get engineered reports. And then they tell me about this annual contract that I have to pay for to have somebody come out and monitor my system. Providers, they call them. And it's quite the cash cow that's come about. So I decided to get read in on these aerobic systems pretty quickly. I'm kind of a handy capable guy and I just didn't feel it right to have to pay somebody to come out on my property when I don't want them on my property to do whatever I, that I could do. So over the next two years, I researched and I got all the mechanics down. I figured out how to do it. I even took an A&M class. I come up with this much information on these things and how they came about. And it's really enlightening when you look at the fact that the TCEQ who manages all this says the homeowners can do it. They don't need to have any kind of stipulations. And they can install, they can, they can maintain. Then you look at the fact that 95% uh, of the counties in this state don't put any requirements on homeowners. They can do it. So they give them the options of getting a contract or not. There's only 5% there's only and Hood County is in part of that. So in July of 2019, I said, I'm not doing this anymore. I filed my paperwork with the county environment and I've been maintaining my system myself for the last two and a half years, going into my third year now. I fill out my reports, I monitor my system four times a year, and I do what I need to do for my system, and I don't have people coming onto my property dictating and mandating and holding this over my head and spending my money that I choose to spend with contractors, not what the county tells me to spend. So 
In February of 26, Judge, you said anybody can bring a petition in front of this court. We were arguing about this, this uh, open mic time. So I petitioned your office Tuesday of this week to bring this back up and change this. This has to stop. But I don't hold a lot of faith in your office in, in getting this done. So I have four more that I would like to distribute, if the clerk doesn't mind, to each commissioner to bring this up next meeting to, uh, to change this. We, uh, we've gone way too, here you go, thank you. We've gone way too long for this cash cow for these providers that turn around and do these things and hold this over and threaten and, and, uh, and then they, and it's quite, if you look Stop into that. it, it's quite abusive what they do. I've heard stories. Um, when you research it, people that have had stories where people don't even show up, they don't maintain it. Even the Environmental Health Department has issues with people doing this. So, so I'm hoping that one of you guys will get in front of this and do it. But as I said, as I told James McCausland when I was down there four years ago, this is going to change. This is not right to have certain homeowners targeted and fined and told how to spend their money. So what's happening now, if you guys get in front of it, that's great. But from when I walk out this door, this quarter, my company has contracted with an OSS instructor, F instructor. We're going to start teaching this class. They're going to get a certificate, and I'm going to show them what I did and how I did, and they're going to march right in behind me because if I can do it, I shouldn't be the only privileged citizen in this county to do this. And everybody, 50 people a quarter, hopefully 50 people a month, eventually will be trained to do this and start pushing back on this because these, these providers are a cash cow and the county has no business in, uh, in mandating how I spend my money on who I contract with. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nanette Samuelson. Good morning, commissioners and judge. Thank you for the time. I hope everyone had a wonderful Independence Day celebration celebrating the independence of our great country just have two things. One is um, just a, something that I noticed. I attended the um, city council meeting for the swearing in of our new mayor, Jim Jarrett. And as I was sitting there, I noticed that when, an, when a, an agenda item came up that was about a plat or a change in something around the city, they put up a visual that showed a diagram of what the person was requesting to be changed and that really goes back to one of the things that I requested and that you guys and, and your staff have done a great job of adding things to the agenda so that the in the form of transparency so that we the citizens can really see what's going on and I was just really pleased to see that the city provides plats and diagrams when things are being requested I don't know if they provide it early, but at least they were showing it on the TV screens, and I know several of you were there, so you also saw that. So just another um, th thing to think about to provide transparency for the citizens. The other one is good news. So last um, court, I came up and spoke about the American Rescue Plan and to look at the possibility of returning that money to the taxpayers and mentioned that there were restrictions on the state but not on the city and county. Well, now a federal judge has um, done a permanent injunction. You may have read it or heard about it. Um, it was around the 4th of July, so great Independence Day. Um, a federal judge issued a permanent injunction on Thursday a, a week ago to block the ambiguous tax mandate in President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill. A U.S. District Judge, Doug Cole from the District Court, for the Southern District of Ohio ruled that the tax mandate in the American Rescue Plan, which seems to tie the relief fund to the state's authority to reduce taxes, exceeds the Congress's authority under the spending clause um, due to its ambigu ambiguity. The interim final rule issued by the Treasury Department intended to clarify the tax mandate does not cure that constitutional violation, the judge stated. So there's a little bit more to it, but that's really what I wanted to get across today is that there is no restriction on the city or county and now the state in taking all or part of that money and refunding it, either refunding it to the taxpayers. I mean, 
you know what the taxpayers have been through the last year, especially business owners, and how they've been hanging by a thread. Some of them have had to take out loans, mortgage their businesses, whatever they've had to do. So what a great thing that would be for the taxpayers and the business owners of the county to provide some relief. <coughs> um, again, I hope you're um, considering the workshops to ensure that there are no strings attached to um, in, to force the county to implement critical race theory or implement um, Planned Parenthood, or as it's called, as um, Commissioner Eagle said, family planning clinics. Make sure that, that, that those strings aren't attached, but as you go through those steps and have those workshops and get your um, counsel from our um, city attorney and county attorney, please be sure and uh, consider returning the some funds to the taxpayers. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, next we have Christine Sonego. Good, Good morning. morning. Gentlemen. Thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, present uh, what I would like to, to be able to get you gentlemen to do with the city, and that is to help people helping people. They're located on King's Plaza, and for years uh, they've had a problem that if they have a lot of rain uh, or a, a torrential rain, it's like a river going down King's Plaza. The road gets uh, full of holes, it, it's been repaired multiple times, etc. But the big problem that's happening, gentlemen, it's, it's a city and a county type of effort. And there's been discussions about it before, but it seems nothing has really happened. It's just been talked about, and I know it's an expense. But what's happening, when they have this torrential rain and the river starts flowing, it runs right through the shop, the resale shop of people helping people. I've been there right after there's been a big rain, and they've, they've used these huge truck tires in the back to, to stop the, the water from running through their shop, but it still goes through, and they have to put everything on pallets to avoid from having everything be destroyed. At one point, it even uh, the, 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 the river, and it is a river, because when I was on the inside part of it, I heard this rushing of water, and I asked the people there, I said, what is this? Oh, well, that's the water running down King. So I went outside, sure enough, I mean, it was a typical river out there. Um, but, but what's happening is that, we need to help them. They do so much for our community. So uh, we need to get the city and the county get together and get a resolution to it. I, I'm not, I'm not a, 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 an engineer or anything like that to know where this water is coming from or how it was caused, but we need to help them. And did you know that none of the people helping people, even up to the director, is working on salary? They're strictly working on volunteering to help our community in need, the people in need to clothe them and, and to feed them. So um, that's my plea, uh, that to please take a, a better look at it. And I really would appreciate your help in helping them so they can continue helping the community. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. That is all that I have, Ms. Lang. Is, is that correct? Okay. All right. Next we have the next item on the agenda is a consent agenda. Does any commissioner wish to pull anything or make a comment on any of the consent agenda items? No. If not, do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve the consent agenda. All right. A motion has been made by Commissioner Eagle to approve the consent agenda, second by Commissioner Wilson. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Motion carries 5-0. Okay. That brings us down to business to be discussed and considered for approval. We have Mr. Donald Lenny with us. And Mr. Lenny, I guess the first thing we need to do is to convene into a public hearing to discuss the approval of the traffic regulations. Is that yeah. correct? Thank you, Judge. So here at 925, we're going to now convene into a public hearing. And the floor is yours, Mr. Lenny. Thank you, Judge. Judge Massengale, Commissioners, uh, this is a traffic regulation agenda. 
uh, Commissioner Wilson has received many calls about this intersection of Blue Water Drive and, and Rainy Court. Currently, we have a, a stop sign at Rainy Court where it tees into, actually it's G Road and, and, and Blue Water Drive, but it, it is a T. But uh, most time we don't add another one because that's where you put your stop signs. But in, in case of, uh, of safety reasons, and that's what we're looking at it on this one. After watching this for a, a good solid week, uh, road operations does recommend setting a, a stop sign on Blue Water Drive in this area. It's uh, it's places that we can't we can't trim to to give visibility. It's it's homes that are in the way and whatever they have in their front yard. So I, I believe this would increase the safety of this this intersection if if the court does approve it. Good. Any other comments or discussion from anyone? If not, let's reconvene back into Commissioner's Court and do, you're recommending then, Mr. Lenny, that we do put up a, a stop sign there at Blue Water Drive at Rainy Court. Is yes, that sir, correct? that's correct. Road operations does recommend approval. Okay, does any commissioner wish to make a motion? So I move that we establish, put a stop sign at Blue Water Drive in Rainy Court in the interest of safety for the county. Second. Okay. Motion has been made by Commissioner Wilson to establish a stop sign on Blue Water Ridge at Rainy Court. Second by Commissioner Eagle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Thank Lennon. you, Judge. Okay. Okay, next we have development. Mr. Clint Head. Morning, Judge. Morning, Commissioners. I'm going to run both the items for development together. They're going to be set in public hearings for both of them. Development has accepted applications for replats for Montego Bay Estates, lots 11R, Block 14, and Precinct 3, and Orchards 14, Lot 3476R, and Precinct 2. Staff recommends setting the public hearing for the August 24th, 2021 20, Commissioner's Court. Okay. Judge, I'll make a motion to uh, set a public hearing for uh, the two items on uh, development there, Montego Bay Estates, Lot 11R, Block 14, and also uh, for Orchard 14, Lot 347, or 3476R for August 24, 2021. Okay. Is there a second to Commissioner? Second. Okay. A uh, motion has been made by Commissioner Cotton to set the public date on the two uh, replats. For August the 24th, 2021, second by Commissioner Wilson. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Head. Okay, now we have line item transfers budget amendments, and we have Miss Melanie Baird here this morning instead of Becky Kidd. Good morning, Judge Good and Commissioners. Morning. How are you all today? Um, we have three line item transfers um, that were presented in our office, and um, I guess, do we want to do them individually, one at a time? Uh, uh, well, let's go ahead and take the district attorneys okay. there together because he's got two. Yes, he and does. And the sheriff has got and one. And he is here, and he will be glad to talk to you all about it. Okay, good. Welcome, Mr. Ryan Sinclair, our district attorney. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. The line item transfers I am requesting from the court today are for drug and DNA testing. These relate to SANE exams that were performed on victims uh, of uh, crimes that my task force uh, investigates. Those uh, DNA samples that are taken from those child victims are sent to the medical examiner's office for DNA testing and analysis. That testing and analysis is quite expensive, uh, so we have this bill. Uh, to pay the medical examiner's office. I'm requesting that we transfer $3,000 from our investigation line item to our drug and DNA testing line item, and then $2,000 from our education and travel line item to the drug and DNA testing line item. Good. Anybody have any further discussion? Do I hear a motion? Judge, I'll make the motion to transfer uh, 3000 from to decrease investigation and increase drug and DNA testing and 2000 decrease education and travel, move to increase drug and DNA testing. Second. Motion has been made by Commissioner Andrews to decrease the two budgets in 
the district attorney's office an increase for the drug DNA testing, which is quite expensive, second by Commissioner Eagle. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Sinclair. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. Uh, okay. The next line item transfer we have is for the sheriff, and he is here to speak on that. Okay, thank you. Sheriff Deeds. Judge, commissioners, the abandoned vehicle is a fund that takes care of itself, but what we're doing here today is um, didn't have enough. The abandoned vehicles and the vehicles that are towed in from arrest come into the impound yard, and then what goes into this abandoned vehicle line is the fees from when they pay to get their vehicles out. Well, we ahead of time, then after the record service presents us with the bills, the bills have to be paid. So this is just transferring money from one side of that fund into the outgoing side of that fund so we can pay the record bill. So ask that you uh, approve this $20,000 out of abandoned vehicle revenue into the to pay the record fees for the remainder of the year. Okay. Do I hear a motion? I'll make that motion to... Uh take out of the abandoned vehicle revenue account 20000 and put it in the record fee account. Second. Okay, motion made by Commissioner Eagle to transfer 20000 from the abandoned vehicle revenue to the record fees. Second by Commissioner Andrews. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> now, no dedicated account line item transfers. Ms. Baird? Um, no, none of those, sir. Okay, what else do you have for us? All right, well, we have, you have all been given the expenditures for um, today's court, um, totaling $1,889,699.94. Um, and um, the audit department has reviewed all invoices for this court and recommends payment. Okay. Okay. I hear a motion to pay the bills. <laughs> Move that we pay the bills in the amount of one million eight hundred eighty-nine thousand six hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-four cents. I hear a second. Second. Okay. Commissioner <laughs> Wilson has made a motion that we pay the bills in the amount of one million eight hundred eighty-nine thousand six hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-four cents. Second by Commissioner Andrews. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries five zero. And you've all been given the um, the invoices that are um, over ten thousand dollars on the board there, so yes, no we questions have. there. We have all that. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you you guys. did a good job. Thank you. Okay. This now brings us to section D, miscellaneous. And does there anybody wishing to speak on that? Any public participation forms at all on the public? Nope. Okay. Item number one, discuss and take appropriate action to authorize a county clerk's office to pay for the county clerk's portion of the conversion to Tyler Odyssey from Fund 68. That's records retention. Mr. Wilson. The county clerk's task, primary task, is records retention. Every activity in the courts that occur in the county and anytime anyone goes and request fun, you know a copy of a record there is a fee attached to that and that fee par a portion of that fee goes into fund 68 and what I'm requesting is is since fund 68 is only for record retention to part of that conversion for the Tyler Odyssey you know, would come for records retention comes out of that fund 68. Okay. Any other discussion? Do I hear a motion? I move that we authorize the county clerk's office to pay for the county clerk's portion of the conversion to Tyler Odyssey from fund 68 records retention fund. Okay. Do I hear a second? Judge, I don't know if this is I mean, I'm, I'm kind of lost on this. This is Katie's money. Do we, I mean, I know that, uh, are we? Are, I think Mrs. Lang would be the first to say this yeah, is no, no, not no, her I would, money. 
I would like, well, I mean, it's, clerk. no, I'm, my, yes, yes, this is under the control of the, the clerk, I guess. Yes, so, Kevin, you're oh, correct. Yeah. It is under so, the control of the <clears throat> county clerk. Are, are you okay with this? I mean, I. Well, I would have liked to been notified or talked to about it or, you know, a little bit of common courtesy would have gone a long way. But um, it's not unusual for me to um, offer up money to pay for things. In fact, I'm paying for the judge's software, um, smart bench, co-file preservation, net data, Tyler Eagle. So um, co-file pre preservation. So there's thousands and thousands of dollars that I've already in, and continue to pay for software out of this fund. And so um, by statute, um, section 203.002, the county clerk's office has established a, a records management fund. It's also by statute um, 118.0216 that services performed by the county clerk after filing and recording a, a document of records of the office of the clerk, the fee collected may only be used to provide funds for specific records management and preservation, including for automation purposes. So it's, it's these automation purposes that we're able to establish these funds. So I'm all about saving taxpayers money. And um, so I would, you know, I would be happily, happily utilize the records management fund once again to pay for the Tyler, Tyler Odyssey conversion. I can't talk for some reason. Um, and I'm glad we have an alternative to pay for Tyler and save the ta taxpayers dollars. So any way I, I can help, I'd be happy to. Good, thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah. yeah, no problem. Thank you, ma'am. With that, I'll second the motion. Okay, all right, we got a motion to uh, authorize the county clerk's office to pay the county clerk's portion of the conversions and migrations, I guess, from the Tyler Odyssey records to for records retention. That motion was made by Commissioner Wilson, second by C Commissioner Andrews. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay, brings us to item number two, discuss and take appropriate action in moving a sergeant step six to patrol deputy step 10, effective Monday, July the 12th. Good morning, Sheriff, again. Good Ms. Morning. Welburn, have you worked with the Sheriff on this too, and Ms. Kitt, so? So this was the step that I left out at the last court, so um, we're gonna move a deputy from sergeant position to back into the patrol deputy line, but it'll be from step six to step 10, so he doesn't lose any money, so that's what number two is. Okay, all right, okay, do. I, someone wishes to make a motion to approve moving a sergeant step six to a patrol deputy step 10, effective Monday, July the 12th. I move. Okay. Got a motion by Commissioner Wilson. I hear second. Second. Second by Commissioner Cotton. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Number three then is moving a corporal from a corporal position up to the sergeant position now that it's been vacated, um, moving him from step five of corporal to step four of uh, sergeant. Okay, so a mo we need a motion to move a corporal step five to a sergeant step four effective Monday, July the 12th. Make that motion. Okay, motion's been made by Commissioner Cotton. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, and the second's been made by Commissioner Wilson. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Next num item. Number four is to put a deputy into that corporal position that was just moved to sergeant. Uh, so step five, uh, deputy taking him to corporal step four. Okay, Did I hear a motion to move a deputy step five to a corporal step four effective Monday, July the 12th, 2021. Move. Okay. Move Okay, motion's been made by Commissioner Wilson to that effect. I have a second. Second. second by Commissioner <laughs> Andrews. Okay, second by Commissioner Andrews. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you, you, Sheriff. Thank you. Okay, 
Item number five, consider and take appropriate action to approve a contract with the Hood County Appraisal District for the collection of taxes in Hood County and authorize a county judge to sign the contract. We have Ms. Andrea Ferguson here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is just the annual contract that we sign every year for the appraisal district and us for the taxes that they collect for us. Um, Matt Mills has already looked at the contract and it's just the usual and we're leaving it at one year instead of, uh, I think he was trying to push it two to three but no, nobody gave feedback on it so I just left it at the one year. Okay. We love seeing you so good. <laughs> okay. So. Mr. Mills, you approve this contract, look at it. Yes, sir. No tricks. Right. No tricks. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Judge, then I'll, I'll make the motion uh, to uh, allow the uh, county judge to authorize to sign the contract. No, no. Oh, you had a, oh, we had a speaking. Uh, I'm right. sorry, you did this what, Ms. Samuelson, come on up here. Okay. I, I, asked, I asked Sheriff if I was too late, he said no, so. <laughs> Um, so I thank you again, Melissa, for providing the open records request for the contracts that are on the agenda today. And it sounds like those are, are going to be made available as links in the future as um, some of the other information. So great job on that. Um, I, so I was just looking at this and reading it. And as you guys know, I'm pretty detail oriented and I really look and scrutinize the contracts. So in the term, it says, that the renewal of the contract should require official action to be taken by March 1st of each year to renew effective September 1st. So just a question, we're in July. I don't know if it was just an oversight or... They were closed still to the public and everything. Okay. Of the pandemic. Okay, so that, that's a question that I have is how does that work when that's in the contract? But also it says that uh, approval by the county tax assessor collector, so I'm not sure if... That's Andrea. Okay. That, that's there Andrea. You go. Good to meet you. <laughs> I've heard your name, but I haven't heard... The okay. So that was it. I just um, was uh, wondering why it was July and the contract clearly states that action has to be taken by March 1st, so that was I'll it. say that you're fairly detailed, Orion, I think is kind of an understatement. <laughs> Thank you. That's like Winston Churchill saying that there was a, due to the mild dis, uh, uh, disruption here in London during yeah. World War II. So, right. thank you. Well, thank you. I'll take that as thank a compliment. You. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. <laughs> that is a compliment. Thank you. And I'll, I'll finish my motion for, to approve the uh, contract with the Hood County Appraisal District for the collection of taxes in Hood County and authorize the county judge to sign the contract. I hear a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Wilson to the authorizing the county judge to sign the contract made by Commissioner Cotton. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you, Ms. You. Ferguson. Okay. Now this brings us to item number six, discuss and take appropriate action to authorize the county judge to sign their interlocal cooperation agreement for county jail functions with Brown County. Again, Sheriff Deeds. Judge, commissioners, um, uh, the jail count is getting back up there. We've had some issues. They're full in Somerville County. We haven't been able to take anybody down there for a while. Erath County hadn't been letting us bring any more in there. They had some COVID here a couple weeks ago. Um, they did have allowed us to take a few more out there, um, but I figured I needed to start looking for more places to keep the inmates. So talked to the Brown County judge and, and he talked to the sheriff and we talked to the sheriff and everybody was in agreement that we could utilize the Brown County Jail at a cost of $45 an inmate. So it'll be the same as Erath County and Somerville County, um, but it, we'll have to take them out to Brown County when, when we utilize this. So, but I needed to, to do it because we've had been up to, just this week, up to 217 in the, for the count. So uh, been over our, uh, 192 <laughs> that this jail will hold. So. so this is just a precautionary measure to make sure that we have facilities and space for inmates. Yes, and so what we do take out there when we decide to take some out there, once this is approved, it'll be people that aren't on any agendas for like tomorrow to be in court so we don't have to go back and forth and back and forth. But the same kind of issues that I ran into when we were taking them down to McLennan County. Um, 
down at Waco that we plan that out and so hopefully they can sit there for a while till we're ready to bring them back for a quarter whatever it is so this will be the same kind of thing okay okay any further discussion is there a motion to authorize the county judge to sign their no local cooperation agreement with the county uh, of Brown County I'll make that motion okay motion been made by Commissioner Cotton do I hear a second Second. Second by Commissioner Wilson. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Okay. Item number seven. Approve the county judge's signature executed on June 29, 2021, before the July 2nd deadline to the Defense Logistics Agency Disposition Services LESO <coughs> application for participation. State plan of operations between the state of Texas and the Hood County Constable Precinct 4 annual agreement. What this was is that um, Commissioner Jordan had been out. He was at a workshop and conducting for a whole week. Then we came up to the deadline. Uh, we had to get it signed before the July 2nd deadline. I went ahead and signed it with the understanding that I would come back into court to get y'all's approval. It's the same contract that we have signed for Constable Jordan the last two years that I've been here. So I'm just asking y'all for approval since I did it so he wouldn't get in contract. This is where he gets free stuff, free generators and equipment and stuff like that from the federal government. And so this has to be on record. So. Is there a motion to approve my signature that I signed on June the 29, 2021 for the July 2nd deadline for the Defense Logistics Agency? Yeah, Judge, and Constable Jordan did talk to me about that. So I will, I will make a motion to ratify your signature uh, that you uh, signed that agreement on June 29th you know, because he just inadvertently left it off the last agenda. Second. Okay. Motion's been made by Commissioner Eagle to approve my execution on June the 29, 2021. Second by Commissioner Wilson. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay. Brings us to item eight. Consider and take appropriate action to approve the fire marshal's office to purchase a new Ford F-250 not to exceed $60,000 from Fund 55. This vehicle will replace the 2014 Chevy Tahoe. We have Fire Marshal Jeff Young. Mr. Young. Judge, commissioners. So this vehicle will be to replace that Tahoe. Um, the biggest concern is in being in an SUV is my investigators cannot separate from their equipment and tools that they use to investigate fires. So out of concern of being able to keep them safe, I was wanting to get them in a pickup. So this truck will come Everything's already wired and installed. The only thing I got to do is put stickers on the door and put the radios in it, which I'll take out of the Tahoe so I don't have to buy radios. Okay. Anybody have any discussion or any comments? Well, in, I, in previous discussion with the fire marshal, the Chevy Tahoe, once it is, you know, disengaged from the county, uh, what was it, Station 70? Uh, it'll be North Hood County. Station North Hood 20. County has requested that vehicle for utilization, you know, as an emergency vehicle, you know, for their medical emergencies. So. Okay. 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 Do I hear a motion to approve the fire marshal's office to purchase a new Ford F-250, not to exceed sixty thousand dollars from Fund 55? So, so moved. moved. By Commissioner Wilson, I said second by Commissioner. Works for me. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. <coughs> Motion carries five zero. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. The last item. This is kind of maybe not a record, Commissioner Eagle, but close to it. Proclaimed July as Fair Housing Month for Hood County. Who could disagree with that? I don't hear anything. Do I? Is there any discussion about Fair Housing Month? 
Well, do I hear a motion for Fair Housing Month? Judge, I'll make that motion. Okay. To proclaim July as Fair Housing Month for Hood County. Second. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Eagle has made a motion to proclaim July as Fair Housing Month for Hood County, second by Commissioner Cotton. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries 5-0, and that concludes the commissioner's court.